How would you explain the marshlands to somebody who doesn't know what it is? Well, water, <laughs> a lot of water, but it's actually nice, calming, you can't really hear traffic, cars. The only way to go by the marshland is by boat, there's no land. Walamsak, walamsak, sabah al khair, ma gajli, ma gajli, ma gajli. Walamsak, gharamak sam ilab galbi, buya, ya, ya, buya. The Iraqi marshlands are quite possibly the best hidden treasure of the Middle East. I'm telling you guys, I've spent over eight months seeking out the best stories in the region, and this is one of the most surreal and exciting ones out there. I invite you to watch this video until the very end so you can fully immerse yourself in one of the purest places on our planet and find out how I ironically got thrown in a police station. Just acting all formal on, on us and stuff. Yeah. As soon as I said it's super safe here, we got busted by the police. He's on the phone talking to his upper guy, the boss guy. The Mesopotamian marshlands are one of the largest wetland ecosystems in the world, stretching hundreds of miles from southeastern Iraq into southwestern Iran. What's so unique is that this region is all desert, but somehow the aquatic landscape provides a special habitat for marsh Arabs and important wildlife like water buffalo. It may not look beautiful behind me, but in front of me, there are these water plains that go out forever with beautiful communities living out here. And what's fascinating is the landscape. We are out here in the middle of the desert to get down to the marshlands was quite the adventure. We had to drive across the country from Baghdad, which as you discovered in my last video, was not so easy. We were faced with over 30 checkpoints along the route and countless hours of stress. Don't talk English, how I do it, bro. But in the end, we made it to a place where very few tourists have ever been before. We're trying to find the way, I'm a little bit lost, so we're asking some locals how to get to our destination. <laughs> just arrived here in a little village called Chebaish in the Mesopotamian marshlands. In front of me I can see buffaloes walking around on the streets, people taking boats to get around as taxis, kids running up to me like this kid, and it's just a beautiful life out here. And this is really my jam. These are the kind of stories I love to tell most, so I hope you guys are excited to hear about this beautiful place on planet Earth. Upon arriving, we were greeted by a handsome local man named Hussein who took us under his wing. He so kindly offered his boat to take us deep inside the marshlands to have lunch with remote villagers who are living in reed houses. But in order to do so, we must hit the market to buy freshwater fish known locally as maskouf, the national dish of Iraq. We've just purchased a fish in the market here and the lady behind me is skinning it, cutting it with a knife, getting all the guts on her hands and everything, blood everywhere, four dead fish. I completely got it clean now, ready to go for the grill. That's our lunch? That's our lunch dinner, so liner. Liner. Something like that. Where are you from? You speak English? Yes, where are you from? Oh, I'm from America. America? Yeah. Uh, I'm from Iraq. You're from Iraq. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you. We are fully stocked with Masgouf and ready to board Hussein's boat so we can enjoy lunch with villagers in the backwaters. This, my friends, is what travel is all about. As you can see behind me, the way people are getting around, the main point of transportation is by boat. Kind of like in Venice, they just take a little boat to get around. Obviously in Venice, it's kind of a luxurious thing to do when you pay a lot of money, but here, it's extremely cheap and it's how you get around. And of course, like everything in Iraq, is waiting. Always. A lot of waits. Smoking cigarettes, eating sunflower seeds. It's just the way it is here. Things are slow, there's always approvals, they always need to check with someone else. Let's go, yalla. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. Here we go, bro. Hey, seven thousand bucks in cameras. Let's hope this doesn't sink. And we're off to explore the wetlands of southeastern Iraq. What a special treat this is. Alvaro told me about this place a couple days ago. I had no idea it existed. And now that we're here, I'm really happy that we decided on this because it's fantastic to see this really unique, authentic culture of Arabs living in the marshlands. So we've now been in Iraq for about seven days and this is by far the best experience for me personally. I love doing this kind of stuff. Going places that people never heard of before, experiencing the culture. There's so many little communities scattered around the marsh and right now we found one that has 
this red and white walls around it and it's very makeshift and there's a horn of a bull on top of it and we're really excited to go explore and see how the people are living. <laughs> the coolest place we've seen in Iraq, at least, and top 10 in my, my travel experience. It's kind of a bummer. They uh, didn't want us to go in and, and shoot them, so we respected that and we kind of backed out and, and we're, heading, we're heading back down the marsh. If you didn't duck there, your head is off. Moments later, we arrived at one of Hussein's friends' houses, ready for our feast. Wow, dude. Dude, this is awesome, man. We are out here. Walking through some barbed wire to get to these little, little hut. <laughs> Look at this place. Completely made out of sticks. Ground, floor. Dude, this place? Bro. Unbelievable. Amazing. Dude, this is why we travel for moments like this, yeah. right? It's a UNESCO site too, it's a UNESCO so I mean, site. For, for a good reason. It's absolutely. Our friend Hyder is already working on the wood for the fire. So we got the fish over here. They're cleaning it first in the water. Now we're putting it over the fire. Woo! That is hot. Yo, he's about to pray. This is incredible. Don't miss this. This is so cool, dude. And now the moment has come. It's time to try the masku. It's starving, bro. It's gonna be delicious. Let's go. about my hoof is that it has a lot of bones, bones you can bones. see coming out of oh, me look at that look at that careful man <laughs> that was so good what an experience man amazing sometimes you need to put the phone down obviously we're recording this for you guys for, but like letting all sink in it's such a beautiful place sun is going down over the marsh mm. drowning right now in the marshes of iraq Droning in Iraq is awesome. That's but crazy. We had to go through three different drone guys to find this guy, right? My guy failed, the next guy failed, and now we got this guy. It's the beauty of this place and the vastness of the landscape. You can only appreciate from above. Having a little chai here as the sun's going down. Super nice guy. Right. Shukran. What an amazing experience eating here, hanging out in the middle of the marshlands with all the Habibis. And now we are heading back to the mainland. <laughs> yeah, man. Boom. As beautiful as these ancient marshlands are, there is a sad recent history that should not go unnoticed. During Saddam Hussein's presidency in the 1980s and 90s, he tried to kick Shia Muslims out of the marshlands. He drained the precious water to 10% of their original levels, killing most of the wildlife and forcing 90% of local residents to move out. <laughs> Saddam destroyed it. Destroyed everything? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel that he destroyed your home? There is no life there because the people go to the city. Yeah. After the fall of Saddam's regime in 2003, the marshes have partially been recovered, but drought along with dam construction have hindered the process from coming back to life. Nonetheless, the marshlands have finally been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2006 for its cultural uniqueness and natural beauty. It's a reward that is damn well deserved. The video is not over yet. Our local friend here took us to a mud house. Look. They have electricity, you can see a fan, but it's really still made out of mud, and who knows how old it is. The mud is like coming off the walls. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to ruin it. But man, super cool. Shukran Habibi. He's just saying he had a lot of fun too, and he's really welcome. And he gets in all the time. The boats are there, the house is all open for you anytime you can come. So, actually, we we're planning to stay here, but we're not sure if there's any hotels around here. So, ask him where we, where we can sleep. He's just saying either you can stay by the place where we had lunch, 
Oh, stay here or at the office? You want to stay at the place we just ate lunch? Uh, sure. It was a beautiful place. A lot of mosquitoes, though. At night, yeah. it's not the best place. I think it's too place. cold. I think too it's cold. too cold. Where does he recommend we stay tonight? He's offering to stay you to, for you to stay in his own. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. nice. Shukran, baby. We accept the offer. Obviously, we'll pay for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but we, it will be an honor for us to stay in this, in this place. No, no, no. Do you want to go to the same All you're going to be alone, no one's going to bother you. It's a perfect place for you, and he doesn't mind at all. Habibi. Thank you. Habibi. Thank you. That's very nice of him. Awesome. But obviously, we'll pay him for it. He's a very nice guy. And th honestly, there's nowhere else to sleep. This is the thing. There's nowhere else to sleep, <laughs> right. but we're not free riders. So, right, 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 exactly. really, completely against. Uh, uh, just free riding all totally. the locals and we want to support them 100 percent so absolutely this man. is a great win-win for everybody absolutely so it's almost dark we got to take the boat now back to the mainland this experience could not be any better so far and it's just so beautiful to be on this boat right now Watching the sun go down, it's almost pitch black right now. You can just see the colors in the sky. Oh man, this is what it's all about. Yo, the flags, look at this. Careful, careful. Oh my God. Jesus, I almost cut my head off. Wow. This is so awesome. Look at this place. <laughs> this is incredible. We're sleeping here tonight? Filled with rugs, beautiful stick. Archways. This is home, bro. Dude, so generous. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, call dibs on this one. Dude, this is literally perfect. Very great day. Great place, dude. We gotta thank him. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. See you tomorrow. Inshallah. 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 Where are you going, man? In the bathroom. Straight ahead. Surprise, surprise. There's no toilet. That's the toilet. Nice squat toilet. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, close the door, close the door. Do you have a blanket or what's going on? <laughs> I don't think there's any. You gotta use a sweatshirt, dude. No, I'm gonna just sleep like this, fully dressed. It's quite cold, but we'll, we'll manage. Oh, I guess I can curl up like this. <sighs> Good night, man. Good night, bro. See you in the morning, bro. No blanket. What is that sound? And <laughs> heat. Good night, bro. Good night, Hi, bro. Having a little morning walk. In front of us, we see a bunch of buffalo. And the, the, the owner guy right there, he's like pointing, he's gesturing to us to like go hang out with the buffaloes. So here we are, we're going now. Photo, photo? Yeah, shukran, shukran. Shukran. Careful, it's all buffalo sh Mashallah, mashallah. Wow, look at this. That's so cute. I wish I could speak to this guy. <laughs> it's really cool um, that the ecosystem here in the marshlands can have buffaloes. Like where else in Iraq can you find buffaloes? It's a very desertous country and they're different kind of buffaloes than you've seen in the Serengeti. I was recently in Tanzania on a safari. Those were massive. These are also massive, but they're much slimmer and their bodies have adapted to this climate that we are in right now. For our final stop of the morning, we are heading to the local market here in Chibaish to get some breakfast, meet some people, and kind of see the life that's happening in the marketplace. Hussein, what's up, bro? What's up, man? How are we doing, man? Well, we're all right. We're all right? You look like a badass. Thank you. <laughs> you have a really cool mosque right behind you. Really? Yeah. So Chibaish is actually bigger than I thought. When, when, yeah. when we head to the marshlands, I was thinking like, oh, we're going to be in a remote little town. But there's actually like a bustling life here. I'm surprised my own self. Yeah, the, like the markets here are really busy, which yeah. we are now entered right now. Very limited. Where's the main area where all those men are yeah, gathering? Yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful out here, man. The weather's nice. Yeah. People are very respectful here. Yeah, it's, it's very, very, very calm, very simple. Would you say this is one of the safest places in Iraq? Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I mean, we've traveled all over the country and I feel pretty safe here. This is really, really safe because no one will try to do anything stupid because you see the tribe, everybody, Everybody protect their own selves, right. you know? We're not gonna have problem shooting, right? No, no, no. Not at all. Let's go back over here. Back that way. Is everything alright? Okay. 
Please stop this. Bro. Problem or no? Yeah, problem. Okay. I'm just acting all formal on, on us and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as I said it's super safe here, we got busted by the police, but it seems to be all right. It seems to be like we're gonna get out of it, no problem. He's on the phone talking to his upper guy, the boss guy. Always gotta get permissions here. I'm in the police station right now in Iraq. Pretty much impossible to shoot in here, but what an experience that was. We well, gotta talk about this. <laughs> well, I guess that's the end of the video. We uh, got stopped in the street by a policeman who seemed nice at first and then uh, called his boss. All of a sudden there were eight policemen around us in the middle of the street. I'm texting Alvaro. He was waiting in the car. I was like, dude, we're, <laughs> I'm going to the police station. Sure enough, they walk us to the police station, sit down. Some guys were friendly, some weren't. Told them I was from Spain. Talk about Real Madrid. You were from Spain? He said I was from Spain. So. No, I, my passport, I didn't have my passport on me. That's it. End of the video, guys. Thanks for watching. It was an unbelievable experience to come here to the marshlands. Did you enjoy? It was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. Did you enjoy? Yeah, Thanks to this guy who's from here, he's uh, Hussein is the man. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. My favorite video I made in Iraq, and uh, the trip continues. See you guys later. Hey guys, quick reminder that on August 12th, I am launching the Drew Binsky Ultimate Travel Hacking Course. Literally, it has all my best travel tips, hacks, secrets, resources, and advice that I've picked up from visiting 194 countries. And the reason why I've done that is because I want to help you guys become better travelers and save money. The course is broken down into 12 chapters like how to find the cheapest flights and hotels, how to make local friends, how to navigate cities and airports, how to maximize travel reward points, what are the best travel apps, how to exchange money, literally everything that I've learned poured into this course. I've literally spent the last five months compiling all this information and I'm super excited to be sharing it with you for the very first time. And I have a very special offer for you guys. If you purchase a course in the first 24 hours, you will be getting 50% off, which is the biggest discount I will ever be offering. And in order to get that deal, you have to be signed up for my email newsletter, which is a link in the description below. And I will be sending a special code and I'm super excited to help you guys get on your way to becoming better travelers because we should all be travelers. We should all learn from the world and traveling makes us wiser and smarter and better people overall so that's all i have to say stay tuned for this awesome course and i will catch you guys later behind me we have made it to the meeting point of the tigris and the euphrates rivers i know it doesn't look like much from here but i learned so much about this, this place as a kid in preschool about mesopotamia the birthplace of humanity the cradle of civilization and that is exactly what we can see right here we have the tigris river and the euphrates really really cool to be here and the sound of the prayers just came on wonderful place great atmosphere gosh guys i don't know iraq is a beautiful country you really get the chance to explore places that people have never really been before. Outsiders, foreigners, tourists I'm talking about. Everybody keeps asking me for my military ID because when they see a US passport, they really think that I am a part of the military because it's like unheard of to have a tourist, an American tourist in Iraq. But this place continues to impress. It's so beautiful and I can't wait to see more. If you could say one message to every person in the world, what would you say to them? Uh, could what be or the mustache? <laughs> no beard and a mustache. Yep. I would really want everybody in the world to just be nice to one another. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's it. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.